Gaelic Chieftain, twelve dollars out to thirteen. His third up record's good enough if he's uh, if he turns up today. just willing to risk him at this point in time. Uh, Chapata's been uh, reasonably well supported there. Six into five dollars, seven dollars rock solid in good health. He'll put itself up on top of the speed for Peter Moody and Luke Nolan and Zabrowski coming down after being unplaced in the Metrop last time out at Randwick. Race number 10, the Neds Herbert Power Stakes, 2,400 metres, Group 2 race and... Uh, an opportunity to win your way into the big one, the Stella Artois Caulfield Cup. And horse number one's the defending champion. He won the race last year with 54.5 kilos. He has 58 this year. He needs to win to get into the Caulfield Cup, the chosen one. He was a surprise winner first up. He may have been a little bit flat up in grade at the Group 1 last time out, but he should be suited here at this distance range and also coming back in class. So I would assume that he's going to improve off his last run. Jane, how's the chosen one present? I thought he was fantastic, fresh. Well, I think both his parades have been full of merit this campaign. He's moving well, he's bright, he's relaxed, and he looks really good again today. Um, he just seems to keep bouncing out of his races and improving every time we see him, so don't discount him. He's officially 24 in the order of entry for the Caulfield Cup, but I've got him about 21. He misses out if he doesn't win today. He's, this is a boy uh, is already assured. His name is Order of the Garter for the Williams family. He won a high rate race here last time out three weeks ago over the 2,000 metres and that booked his way into the Caulfield Cup. It was a dominant display, he settled up on speed and he was too good for Chapada late. Out to the 2,400 metres for the first time in Australia but he's only had three runs back this time in. His grand final's next week but he can definitely win this along the way. He yeah, continued to tighten up with racing. Um, I think he's probably at his peak now. It's a very typical parade from him. He's nice and relaxed. He did have a little bit of a sweat last time uh, between his back legs. He's not doing that today. So, uh, look, very, very nice parade. Typical parade from the favourite here. And the colours have been carried to victory five of the last ten years, uh, the uh, Williams family. Four, Platinum Invader for Peter Moody. This stayer from New Zealand has only had two runs in Australia over 1,620 and 2,040 metres. On both occasions, he's just been outsped. He hasn't been fast enough. But this distance range should start to be more comfortable for him. Maybe he even wants a little bit further than today. He's a Kiwi who was competitive in some of their best staying races, but he needs to lift off his, what he's produced here in Australia. Yeah, third in an Auckland Cup. Here's the Oaks winner. Is it D-Day for her, Danny O'Brien, Miami bound? I think it needs to be, Richo, because, look, she was encouraging first first up at Mooney Valley, but she was back on the inside, which was probably the best place to be. Then she was, you know, unlucky in the Maccabi Diva. Last time out, I thought she had a chance in the JRA Cup and she wasn't able to build into the race. Look, she's paraded really good all preparation. I've actually been quite taken by her in most of her parade. She's very bright, she's very alert, she seems pretty happy, she's moving well. So her parade's really not giving any indication that uh, she doesn't want to be here and she doesn't want to perform. And she's assured of a run in the Caulfield Cup, but uh, is she going well enough for them to accept? Number six, Muhammad Ayas. Was beaten four lengths behind order of the Garda last time out, settling back in the field and attempting to run on. He's got a big gap to make up on that particular horse. I'm not convinced that he's going well enough to Bridget. My question mark was where will the improvement come from with him because I thought that he was really at his peak, he was nice and tight and fit uh, but I have to say he's actually done very very well in between races and he looks bright and he's lovely and relaxed so look I probably wouldn't discount him on his parade. Yeah, he's not paid up for the Caulfield Cup which is interesting. Number seven certainly is in good health. Uh, she was fantastic in the naturalism. All four of her runs since joining the Peter Moody stable have been absolutely terrific and she was the horse that set the speed last time out and it wasn't just a fast spent uh, tempo, it was really, really fast. So for her to be beaten only a length and a half behind Order of the Garter, it was a very solid run. Can she extend it out to the 2400 metres? That has to be the question. Given the way she looks, she, you would suggest she can run the 2,400 metres. She's a lovely big mare. She's got a lot of stretch about her, and she's very, very strong. So I think she's going to give herself every chance to run a strong uh, 2,400 metres, and she continues to parade well. William Pike looking for five winners on the day. Uh, the record is Roy Higgins, eight winners in the 67 Caulfield Cup Carnival. Wow. 
William Pike Zabrowski. He's on the quick backup after racing in the Group 1 Metropolitan last week where he finished sixth, beaten four lengths behind Mirage Dancer. He got shuffled back through the field at a crucial stage and I think that was against him. He can definitely bounce back here, Zabrowski. He's a horse who was narrowly beaten in the derby as a three-year-old. Yeah, well prepared for this. He's had the racing under his belt so he's got a good fitness base. Uh, he looks like he's handling his racing well too, holding his condition so I can't find any negative with his parade. Well, Mike Moroni raised, Mike Moroni raised a really good point. Number nine, Chapada, runner-up in the naturally, and so missed to the golden ticket into the Caulfield Cup and the stable also missing the golden ticket into the Melbourne Cup by one. Yeah, he finishes off strongly. It was terrific behind order of the Garda coming from well back in the field to run second. He, he would have appreciated that really strong tempo. He's not likely to get as strong a speed here, but I would suggest he's better suited out to the 2400. Look, he's a horse that I thought had a little bit of improvement uh, first up and he went a slashing race. So uh, it bodes well for him because he's come on with that run under his belt. He looks smart in the yard. And number 10, Gaelic Chieftain. The blinkers go on third up. We've seen this recipe before. He's even having a look at the camera saying, yep, I've got the blinkers on. Have a look at me. This is D-Day. Um, look, he's an eight-year-old, so he's certainly um, not getting any younger, but he just reacts so well third up with the blinkers on. It's, you just follow that pattern with him every preparation. He'll run his best race. Is that good enough to improve and turn the tables on order of the garter? He didn't get a lot of luck there last time out, but uh, he should be cherry ripe today. All right, your top four for the Herbert Power. Who wins their way into the Stella Artois Caulfield Cup? I'm with the Navy, White Armbands and White Cup. Order of the garter. I don't see any reason to jump off this horse. Gallic Chieftain, uh, the value play and potential danger to knock him off at a big price. Chapada, Zabrowski, um, you'd have to say in good health could be in with a decent chance as well. But look, if the favourite continues to build off that last run and he's going to be a leading contender in the Caulfield Cup next week, he's got to be running very, very strongly here and I think he'll win. I'm with the chosen one. Big performance, wasn't it, uh, from In Good Health in that naturalism BZ. She was gutsy as. Yeah, well, she was the one that spent a lot of petrol to get to the front, and she didn't just stop when she got there. She continued to run. Um, but, look, if she does, I, I don't suspect she's going to go as fast as that, trying to run a strong 2,400 metres. But from the draw, gate four, in a relatively small field, the favourite order of the garter probably just sits one pair back, maybe two pairs back. Mm just stalks the speed, doesn't need to get too far from them. And look, I thought he's been terrific in all three runs this preparation. He's just continued to improve. If he does that again today, he could be quite hard to beat. Chapada got close to him there at 2,000 metres. Will he close off stronger at the end of the 2,400 metres and win his way into the Caulfield Cup? Clearly, Order of the Garda doesn't need to win to get into the Caulfield Cup, where some of the other horses need to. But look, when we're dealing with being only seven days away from the main target, mm -hmm. you'd like to think that he's here ready to win and is going to be putting his best foot forward. Just on Chapada, B. He had that sort of semi-winter campaign where he ended up in the banjo Patterson final, almost mimicking uh, that Danny O'Brien theory that uh, was sort of uh, mooted uh, last year with Vow and Declare having that winter campaign to sort of almost uh, replicate what they do in Europe before they come here. Yeah, well, um, he'd like to think now that he's, he's starting to get to the right spot. Here we see um, Zabrowski just being replated, so we might just have a minor delay um, with the start of the final event, the Herbert Power Stakes. Um, there's a fair bit riding on the line here for a number of these uh, horses if uh, the favourite is beaten. Obviously, it's already secured its place next week. But uh, no horse can be penalised going into the Caulfield Cup. Uh, ben Iscari, who did you like here in the last? Yeah, I tipped order of the garter. Obviously, he's not eligible for a Caulfield Cup penalty. He's already there, but he is eligible for a Melbourne Cup penalty, and they might like a penalty to get him up the order of entry in the uh, the Melbourne Cup. So he looks the obvious uh, good market support for Chapada who got so close to him at 2,000 metres. You think he's going to be advantaged up to 2,400. And we see Polly Gray's been scratched from this race day. She runs around in the Cranbourne Cup tomorrow. Bit of news earlier today. Um, Nonconformist who was favourite for the Cranbourne Cup has been scratched. He's going to go around in the Coongee Cup here at Caulfield on Wednesday. But even with that scratching of Nonconformist, it's a terrific field in the Cranbourne Cup tomorrow. And I can't wait to get out uh, back to Cranbourne. We were there last night for the Pinker Pinker Plate. We're heading back to Cranbourne tomorrow for Cup Day. Terrific support card. And it's as, even with the scratching of nonconformists, it is an outstanding edition of the Cranbourne Cup where Dr. Drill is the favourite now. And that was on the back of uh, a forgivable run in the Nationalism. He was caught wide, pulled up lame. He uh, was terrific first up. So he's the favourite at the moment for the Cranbourne Cup. A poly Gray scratched out of this race, runs there tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great weekend of racing, as you say, Benny. The Pinker Pinker on Friday night. Caulfield Guineas Day, 10 of the best here this afternoon. And then back to Cranbourne on Sunday for that Cranbourne Cup. Uh, 
Any thoughts there tomorrow? Have you had a look, BZ? Oh, I haven't had a look. Benny's our man. Cup. Yeah, I'll, I'll happily defer to um, Ben as Gary. Um, <laughs> ten races here at Caulfield was <laughs> enough to take enough. my focus. Um, but uh, I'm sure I'll be tuning in tomorrow, watching Racing.com and flicking on my Racing.com app and having a look at uh, Ben as Gary's expert selections for each and every race. He was on fire last night. Got his best bet of the uh, card home and De Niro mm. in the last. His best value just missed in the uh, in the big in the big race, the Pinker Pinker Plate. But anyway, let's turn our focus here to the uh, Herbert Power Stakes over the 2,400 metres. Your favourite remains Order of the Garter at 260, but there has been a good late push for Chapada. Now into 440. Let's get to Matt Hill. Chapada coming along. Platinum Invader now joins the line. Order of the Garter. Now comes up, so we've got two to get set. Maha, Medeus, Riderless, and also Gallic Chieftain. Order of the Garter is in. Here is Maha, Medeus coming up Riderless, as he usually does. And Gallic Chieftain, who was OK through the line, recorded a duck egg last start, but looking for 2,400. 14 to 13 with the books here, 13 the tote. To wrap up uh, what's been a very entertaining day of racing, Day one of the Caulfield Cup Carnival. We race here Wednesday and back here for the Cup Saturday. A couple of horses in this want to be there. They're set to go. Ready at the 2400 for the Herbert Power. And they're racing. Pretty good line away too. Miami bound from barrier number one away cleanly with also in good health who leads it in order of the garter. Zabrowski tucks in behind. Then Maha Medeus, the chosen one a little bit wide. Then Chapada, second last platinum invader. And last is Gallic Chieftain at the post in good health for Luke Nolan. It's the old guard, Luke Nolan and Peter Moody with in good health leaving the straight. 2,000 metres to go by two. Two lengths order of the garter. Miami bound is third and Zabrowski fourth one off the fence. Maha Medeus next on the outside. Then came Chapada, the chosen one well back and three deep around Gallic Chieftain and Platinum Invader on the fence last. 1,700 metres to go. In Good Health is going to try and control this and led and slowed it off at the 1,600 by about a length and three quarters order of the garter. Two for the back in the field third. One off the fence, Zabrowski. And then came the inside Miami bound from Maha Medeus Chapada. The chosen one third last from Gallic Chieftain and Platinum Invader at the end. 1,400 metres to go. It's in a nice rhythm. This leader in good health and sets a steady tempo up the hill as it likes by two lengths order of the garter. And then Zabrowski, Miami bound. Further back is Maha Medeus Chapada, then the chosen one, who's doing it a little bit tough today from Gallic Chieftain and Platinum Invader. No change in the Herbert Power as they run through halfway and towards the side of the track. In good health in front by a length and a half to in second place order of the garter a length Miami bound third and fourth in the race Zabrowski as Nolan just kept this little field going Chapada is fifth on the inside from Maha Medeus wider than the chosen one Gallic Chieftain and Platinum Invader so at the railway side 700 metres to go in good health by a length and a quarter order of the garter not letting the leader get away as in good health now steps it up and at the 550 two lengths order of the garter and Damien Oliver's getting busy on the second horse. Then Miami bounds Zabrowski from Maha Medeus Chapada, the chosen one. Gallic Chieftain under the bat, followed by Platinum Invader. In good health around the turn looks a lead all of the way. In the straight at the 250, two lengths order of the garter looks beaten. Chapada runs on. Then Zabrowski, Miami bound in good health with 150 metres to go. Chapada's the threat. Chapada up to in good health. Chapada takes the lead and is coming clear racing well. Chapada won the Herbert Power. Head bobber second Zabrowski just got that from Platinum Invader Gallic Chieftain I'd say that in good health behind the Miami bound Maha Medeus from the chosen one and order of the garter amongst the tail enders. He certainly enjoyed and certainly deserved that Chapada. He got a beautiful run in transit. Daniel Stackhouse has had a day of frustrations. He might have just got Mike Moroni a spot straight into the Caulfield Cup with Chapada. He was runner-up in the other key lead-up races, the win and you're in the Caulfield and Melbourne Cup, Mike Moroni, with this horse, Chapada, and also sound from a Melbourne Cup point of view. Well, he's got a runner into the Caulfield Cup now. Chapada wins for Mike Moroni and Daniel Stackhouse comes past in good health, who had set a nice tempo. And the bubble has burst with Order of the Garter, who looks like Nick, he's dropped out and ends up finishing at the rear of the field. So there will be a story to come from that 
Peter Moody's horse started to improve their Platinum Invader. All honours, Chapada. Yeah, hard to begrudge him of victory. He was travelling well. I think he was the last horse to come off the bit. He's had that winter preparation where we saw him get back into the winner's circle for the first time in quite a while. And he certainly uh, put his best foot forward so far this spring, BZ. Yeah, he was terrific today. And what do you say about the favourite? One of the leading contenders for the uh, Stellar Artois Corfu Cup next week. First run beyond 2,000 metres here in Australia and was pretty weak over the concluding stages. So might be back to the draw board there. There'll be a few people scratching their head um, whether he still will be at the top of the betting for the Caulfield Cup. But uh, this horse has now booked his way into the $5 million race. He excelled up in distance to the 2,400 metres today. Let's head to Daniel Stackhouse. Well, Stacky, you've been riding like a demon all day. Great to get one on the board. Yeah, definitely. You know, this horse is such a gentleman to ride. I was travelling so well throughout the whole race. I just need the openings and uh, big thanks to Mike and his team and uh, got the job done. You know this horse inside and out. He ran terrific in the naturalism last start. You had to have been very confident coming into today. Yeah, I was actually. When I seen the nominations in the fields, I was a little bit, uh, a little bit confident. You know, just off his run the other day, and I thought he'd take great improvement from that run. Um, he's such a gentleman to ride. So if not to 2400, I had no issues with that. And uh, how's the weight, mate? Because you might have to get in the sauna. Yeah, no, I might have chopped one of my three legs off. And they tell me, <laughs> they tell me that uh, you celebrate by going fishing down on Mornington Pier. Oh, yeah, you know, I've got to do something these days. <laughs> well done, mate. Congratulations. Thanks, Cheers, brother. Thank you. Well, a great win for Daniel Stackhouse. And Chapada goes into the Caulfield Cup with 50 and a half kilos. Mike Maroney, can't get the smile on you, off your face. You, fought, you deserve that. Yeah, I think the horse does. He's sort of been... Um, Pretty unlucky in Group 1 races before as a three-year-old and uh, then sort of got a little bit lost in his four-year-old year, but he seems to come back a long way stronger now. Yeah, he certainly has uh, 50 and a half kilos. Have you got a jockey in mind at that sort of a weight? Yeah, look, I think there's a couple around that can do the weight, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be talking to the owners and, and, and talking to jockeys, obviously, uh, about that. But um, yeah, look, I, he's pretty tough sort of horse. I think he'll come through well enough. I'd be surprised if he doesn't. Your brother's a pretty good judge, isn't he? I think $32,500 at the Classic Sale he picked up this boy, if you don't mind. Yeah, did right. Look, he uh, does a great job. And, um, you know, for the time he arrived in the stable, he always had a bit of presence about a lovely horse and, um, and always showed. He's one of those horses that, from the time we have him work, just to watch him, he just had one of those actions. You can watch him all day. You know, he just had a real rocking horse action and uh, got a beautiful temperament and a really lovely horse to deal with. And backing up's not going to be an issue for him? I don't think so, because he's that sort of horse. He's um, pretty laid back, and uh, fitness levels are pretty good now. My brother and I don't agree on many things. Do you and Paul always agree? Oh, uh, well, most of the time. Yeah, really? Yeah, most of the time. There's two years and two days between us, and I'm the old one. I used to win, but I don't win all the time now. <laughs> Congratulations on getting a Caulfield Cup uh, runner. It's a great thrill for everyone involved. Well done. OK, thank you. Yeah, there he is, Mike Maroney. Jeez, uh, he's, he's had some good stays over the years, hasn't he, BZ? And he knows how to get them right at the right end of the season. This horse is now building his way towards some of the spring features and uh, books his way into the Corfu Cup and who knows, could get a, a penalty also heading towards the uh, Lexus Melbourne Cup on the first Tuesday in November. But uh, the favourite, Order of the Garter, was $2.70, ran at the tail of the field. Hopefully everything is A-OK -okay there. But we look at the replay here um, of the concluding stages and in Good Health is the uh, leader and Luke Nolan sort of picked up the tempo um, just before the turn. Damien Oliver was sitting second in the run. Um, ben Asgari, we bring you into the chat. What was your thoughts on the performance of the favourite? Clearly disappointing, but um, what do you take out of this race? Yeah, I wondered if maybe, I'm clutching at straws a little bit with the favourite, but maybe getting into what looked a slow race where he's come out of some very fast races at his past couple. He got a little bit keen and may have just wasted a bit of energy. I'm not sure. Regardless, he was well below par. Um, it was a nice ride, Daniel Stackhouse. We look at the overhead here. You'll see him nowhere to go on the back of Miami Bound. Just squeezes in a narrow gap between Miami Bound and Zabrowski. And look at that. Beautiful shot there, the, the camera shot to see him get through that gap into the clear. And then he launches out after In Good Health, who did a good job. I just think she was less effective out to 2,400 metres. Um, but she has done a... Uh, a really good job to hang on. Zabrowski ground away. He just doesn't have any turn of foot, but stuck to his task nicely. But right under Chibata, he put the riding on in the wall in the naturalism stakes and 
breaks through today, I guess, I don't, I don't know what to make of order of the garter to answer your question uh, in a long-winded way, BZ, <laughs> but all honest with Chapata there today and a beautiful ride there having a look at that chopper shot. How good is the chopper shot both early and late in a race? Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? It gives you a great insight, that bird's eye view that we normally don't get the chance to do. Just to Though the jockeys had the place to themselves. With four Group 1s on the card, the feature was a race in two. Ole Kirk driving, Ole Kirk up to Azar, it's got it! Ole Kirk by the guineas and neck! Stallion Ole Kirk paid $4 the win ahead of Azar and Grand Slam, with connections now in line for a big windfall at stud. What it means is he's the best three-year-old in the country now, so... It's as simple as that. If they want to retire him, I'm happy with that. Hoop William Pike held the hot hand all day. That victory among four triumphs, which also included the $1 million Caulfield Stakes. Arcadia Queen first look at 2,000 is going to turn over Russian Camelot. Arcadia Queen upstaging the Cox Plate and a Melbourne Cup favourite. Cox Plate? Yeah, I suppose you have to, don't you? Um, of course. Good deal. Earlier, Michael Walker made his only ride count with $10 shot Odium first past the post. I know you love a party. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do that tonight. How do you celebrate? Uh, I'll be changing my son's nappies. <laughs> a third group one for jockey Jamie Carr with a fresh Mr Quickie taking out the Turak handicap while trainer Michael Moroni booked a spot in the Caulfield Cup with this. Chapada takes the lead and is come clear racing well. Chapada won the Herbert Power. Braden Ingram, Nine News. Russian Camelot at Caulfield. In a day of Group 1 racing boom, Colt Ole Kirk established himself as the premier three-year-old in the country. It was a battle royale and a queen trumped a would-be king. Arcadia Queen first look at 2,000 is going to turn over Russian Camelot. Arcadia Queen a length and a quarter Russian Camelot. Two heavyweights looking to face off again in the Cox Plate. Cox Plate? Yeah, I suppose you have to, don't you? Um, of course, good deal. I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of her. Jockey Michael Walker had just one ride today and it was on Odium in the Thousand Guineas. And Odium has won the Thousand Guineas from personal instant celebrity... Equity. And Walker will be celebrating in a rather unusual way. How do you celebrate? Uh, I'll be changing my son's nappies. <laughs> Enjoy it. Ole and away in the big one, the Caulfield Guineas. Got it! Ole Kirk on the Guineas and neck. Azar second, third Grand Slam. Boom Colt, Ole Kirk making it four wins from four rides for Willie Pike. What it means is he's the best three-year-old in the country now. So it's as simple as that. If they want to retire him, I'm happy with that. A perfect ride from Jamie Carr steering Mr Quickie to victory in the Turak Handicap. It's Mr Quickie for Jamie Carr. Won the Turak, second Buffalo River, third Superstore.